Hi, Nathan. And uh, who else? Peter. Hello. Hello. How goes it? Yeah, good. Good. Um, keeping busy with the, the biggest Imba code base. So we have a lot of things we want to implement before Christmas. But uh, mm -hmm. I think we'll prioritize uh, Imba version 2 launch. So that's going to be exciting. Really looking forward. Sindri, can you hear us now? Yeah. Hey. Great. How are you doing? Sorry. I'm good. I'm just, I have a child with a cold. So it's a kind of a, a little, a little focus on that. So um, I uh, was running a bit late. But I'm here now. That's great. So uh, I didn't prepare any notes. But uh, I tried to add some topics quickly right before uh, started yeah. the call. So, um, or maybe it was in between. So the two topics added is documentation status and then server side example. Can you guys see my screen? Yeah. Yes. Yep. Cool. So uh, should we add any more topics before we get started? Uh, I'm not sure. Do anyone else have any? Do input? we want to discuss? what is needed for a v2 launch or is that maybe premature Sindra? um i'm not sure we we could definitely discuss that uh it's i or think it's beta launch i guess yeah uh yeah we can add that i think it's primarily documentation but uh, definitely yeah alexander do you have some news on the on the 4k milestone with the stars uh I like uh, uh, Sindri should have some samples. Have you gotten them? I actually, yeah, I got them, and and they looked good. Like if, if anything, it was almost too small now, but it's not. It was uh, it was nice, like the the graphics. I can send you a picture. I just need to. I'm not uh, in the. I'm in the attic now. Uh, nice. Of, that, uh, that would be see. really cool. Yeah, but definitely. Yeah, they look cool. So, yeah. So uh, Peter, have you have you gotten to send a pull request to the Imba project? You can still be. If if you haven't already. <laughs> well, I got sidetracked. I was invited to contribute to a book and I had to finish up a journal article, but those are behind me now. So I'm getting back into the literate programming for Imba project, but it's going to take a little bit more time. I yeah. should take your chance now before the t-shirts are ready for printing. So <laughs> good to know. Yeah. Cool. So uh, yeah, just send, send me the picture and uh, or send us the picture on the Discord. Yeah. Because if yep. there's nothing preventing it, then we just need to figure out the practical detail. So um, yeah. how are we going to do it? Like, should we look at um, like a coupon code thing, right? Where we can just send the coupon code to people and then they use that in the Teespring store. I don't know how we can do it practically, but uh, it would be nice to not have to be uh, intermediate between Teespring yeah. and the, the person receiving the t-shirt because then they can just input all of the uh, address, like uh, where they live and uh, that information yeah, that's manually. True. That's true. So I'm, I'm going to look into that. Um, I was going to look into it, but I was uh, waiting for the um, samples. Cool. Yeah. I look forward to the t-shirts too. Definitely. So, if we look at the next topic, uh, Nathan, you, you have been doing some work in the documentation. I've seen some notifications from GitHub. Do you want to let us know what's going on? Yeah, sure. Um, so I, I started to work on the documentation. I'm getting familiar with the, the way the site's laid out and stuff. And, and I actually kind of got carried away tweaking some parts of the site more so than updating the documentation. Although I do have a, I think an outstanding pull request with some uh, actual updates to the documentation, adding a few examples, filling in a few areas, also cleaning up a few things and marking things as work in progress because we have like a new work in progress badge for the areas that are. Yeah, I saw that yet. really, really nice. Like it's covering the whole site right now, right? Is this uh, something you added? Um, I didn't add that. Oh, okay, but Same. I tweaked the style a little bit and, and on the you can see on the left sidebar There's a little badge for the areas that are incomplete And so and I didn't add that either But I've just been going through and making sure that that's accurate and I think some of that work is still in an outstanding pull request 
Um, this this is I really think, nice. This banner here. I think I think I merged both both of the pull requests that are open. Uh, oh okay. Uh, well, but one I think. Of, yeah. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Okay maybe. Oh yeah yeah. This is the latest. Um, okay yeah. So I, I yeah I updated it just to make sure some of the areas that weren't marked as work in progress are. And uh, and then I went through and I and I started making some actual updates to the docs. Not a ton. Although as I go through, I notice that. Um, it's a little more complete than, than I thought. And I'm like poking around for where are the areas that aren't filled in yet. I kind of remember that the old, um, not the old, old documentation, but uh, Sindre updated this a bit recently. And in the old one, there was like, for example, there was a section on state management that I think had some content in it. But now when you I click think on state management, it's empty. Yeah, I think that it's probably not correct, but I think I moved that state management into basic syntax and uh, uh, the, the mounting elements because it's mm. not kind of it's not really about state management; okay, it's just right. a primer on how you mount things. But that right. should probably the whole architecture there or the whole structure. I think uh, it makes sense to uh, to uh, possibly like the mounting pull that out into a, a top level section under rendering stuff like that because i think the the order things are now uh, are probably not that intuitive for people coming to the language uh, right yeah okay uh, by the way I, I added you to the to the team on on uh, github now because it makes sense i see you've been adding pull requests from your own fork so you uh, can yeah. still continue to do that if you want to but it's much better just to have Right access to the repository and do right. your own branches uh, on the. Okay, repository. that'll be easier. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So that makes sense, and uh, I'll, maybe I'll go through and like maybe we just remove that state management link, and yeah, I think there's yeah, definitely some improvements to be done to the overall organization and also like the hierarchy because sometimes things get nested fairly deep, yeah. and there may be opportunities to kind of like just tweak that a little bit. And yeah, I right think... now it's 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 weird Sorry. that when you click on the heading now, you always get sent to like the deepest nesting. If you, you catch what I mean, like we should. Oh, does it open everything? A lot of nesting where we instead start to use angs. Like uh, if if you click on on uh, the basic syntax and inside on language, language, on operators language. Okay, operators. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So operators language. Yes, exactly. Right. So yeah, I don't, I don't get it. Like, so like what do you of, mean? It, I mean, instead of like now, you can actually click into every section in Markdown. Essentially, like right. every heading element is its own nested thing that can be displayed in its own page. So if you now click oh, on okay. operators, you can click on arithmetic operators. At some point, it should probably not show. A right. single page for just that section it should just rather should scroll just scroll you there that. Now, yeah. was it like that before or did i did i maybe break that no you didn't, didn't break okay. it but it's okay. <laughs> it changed to this uh some time ago like right yeah yeah that makes sense to me maybe i can maybe i can yeah. tweak that um yeah we can, we can is there a possibility to include some keyboard shortcuts for example pressing the arrow to the left or to the right it switches to a previous or next page I, they actually do that now, but they might not be uh, completely working well. If I am on grammar, it is going to the next and previous page. I think Nathan kind of removed the 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 highlighting of what section is actually showing. Oh yeah, that, it was, used that was to a mistake be that I, I noted. Yeah. <laughs> I have to fix that. But yeah, left and right does work on on the moving from page to page now. Ah, uh, great. Should be yeah. But there is still um, some, yeah. So I think for me, the next step is uh, a couple things to fix with the menu, like I, the highlighting went away, so I'll fix that. And then, um, and then I want to start noting all this. I'm going to go through and try and find all the sections that are empty so that we can have a list where we say, here's what's empty, who can help us fill these in, you know? Because right now it's kind of like, I think there's a couple that are empty, but they're mostly filled in. And like, I'll just get a nice list of that, maybe post it into the Discord or, or maybe a, a GitHub issue. And then the next thing I want to do is think about the organization. Can this be organized better? And I feel like there's maybe some room to kind of like 
you know, th this, this, the documentation as an introduction, it kind of jumps right into some of the nitty gritty details of the language where we should probably have some, maybe like we call it a guide um, that's, that leads you through maybe a couple examples that take you through most of the features, but it's more of like, here's why Imba is interesting rather than here's every single aspect of it. I was also wondering, there was recently the last post in the documentation section on Discord. It's from a user called Pi. He says yeah. he doesn't know anything about this language yet, uh, but he would like to help with the documentation. And I was wondering, maybe these people are the ideal to point out if the learning curve is too steep or if they, if you're missing an entry point or if, mm. if there is a better way of catching the, the beginners to the language. That's a great point. Yeah, because I was a little confused. Like, if he doesn't know the language at all, why does he want to help out with the <laughs> documentation? It seems like he'd want to learn or, you know, play with it or something. But that's well, a good point. I, I, it's like, I, I, go ahead and play I, I, with it and then tell us how, where it falls short, right? Yes, yes, it's the first impression because actually this guide, the, uh, the way how it is, if you read it three times over, you know the language, no matter that there are some sections that are empty or incomplete. If you just read it a number of times, you get the whole, you, it makes sense. Yeah. But as an entry point, if you just come and you only have a, three minutes to spend on this website, is the information actually enticing? Right. Is right. it catching? Yeah, great point. Yeah. Um, okay, so maybe Nathan, maybe you can reach out to this person. Yeah, to I'll, I'll reply to the him. guide. And I think Nathan is also going to look kind of at the the landing page as well, the the front page of Imba, trying to just figure out how we're gonna how we're gonna sell it and how we're gonna actually entice people to to try it out. Yeah, I'll that's, be doing that. That's good. Uh, so, have you made have you made up your mind uh, what you will do about the main Imba website? Will you start including references to this version too, or not yet? I think we should. So uh, Frode probably before I I entered, I think Frode talked somewhat about our plans, like trying to push out a beta of Imba two in the not too distant future. And I think uh, we should just get rid of the old site. Like we can keep it on on v1.imba.io. But I think we should essentially use this new documentation site with a landing page, like with the simple page in front. Uh, I think we should use that as the new website. So maybe we can schedule that for this week to, to yeah, to, to, to start working on that. Yeah, yeah. And I, and I also think that we should sooner rather than later actually flip it. It doesn't make any sense now to, to keep showing people Imba 1 when they come to the Imba style. Well, particularly because every now and then we still catch somebody uh, unsuspectingly uh, learning Imba version 1. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. that really hurts when, when you see that. And, and when they start making some funny questions, and say like, by any chance, are you looking at version 1? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are yeah, you that I, stupid? Have you actually gone to Imba.io to learn this? <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, exactly. So it's actually the fault is on our side. <laughs> yeah. I find myself looking at the Imba 1 docs once in a while when I get confused about Imba 2 to see if there was some reference to something that's not documented yet, but that's pretty yeah. rare. So yeah. uh, for the change itself, we can do that. That's fine. That's not uh, difficult. We, we just need to rename some directories. But yeah. uh, I remember, Sindra, you have asked me a couple of times about some caching-related issues. So are those resolved, or do you need access to the servers? So there were, I think I fixed a few more service worker issues with Safari today. There are still some weird... The, the way we show the examples in the documentation is actually kind of tricky because we use service workers to do the compilation, and we kind of do weird hacks to make sure the service worker knows which... Uh, top level window it has to talk to and yeah there's a lot of stuff there uh, I think most of it is working now uh, but I'm not sure what has to do with caching and what hasn't what's unrelated uh, but as you talked about it's now living on digital ocean I was considering talking to Frode about this week moving it to the, the 
Squimba server or the old Squimba server or something. So we have complete control over it and actually add like wildcard uh, HTTPS uh, certificate uh, and stuff because then we can do um, do the the service worker stuff uh, in a better way. Like yeah. So so through the uh, just send me your uh, public SSH key, and I can give you access to the to the server running Imba, Imba yeah. IO V1 V2. Is yeah. it uh, DigitalOcean just for curiosity or? Yes, it uh, it is DigitalOcean. Okay. I just uh, don't remember the. I don't remember what is where the imba.io is right now it might still be on an old line node but the new one is definitely on a yeah. digital ocean <laughs> uh, but i think it might make sense to actually just start deploying it on on the on the ovh server we have like one of them sounds instead. good so if i give through the access he can probably yeah. move stuff over yeah cool yeah yeah do we have the imba.new domain? Did anyone actually register that? No, I, I haven't. Or... No, I haven't done it, uh, okay. but it's easy and, and I don't think anyone will claim yeah. it. But, uh, but, but maybe maybe that. you should do that because that, that sure. works especially well with Scrimba, like when we get the template stuff out. Yeah. The, the, the point is that we've, we've got like typescript.new and a few other like css.new. No, what do we have? HTML.new, CSS.new, and TypeScript.new, yeah. Yeah, and we're going to have like Imba.new so that if you go to Imba.new, the domain, then you will be put right into a Imba template on Scrimba uh, and also be able to choose among a bunch of different Imba templates to just quick, um, quickly like sketch out some stuff or, or check some something. It's a just a shorthand to start a playground on Scrimba. Nice. Cool. So then, the, if there's nothing else related to the documentation, I want to move on to the next topic. Is there anything mm -hmm. more? I think everything uh, Nathan is doing is great. It's really amazing to see yeah. progress on the do documentation. And yeah, yeah, really, really cool. So Nathan has actually, he showed me, he's actually already created quite a few like prototypes and things in him, but too. And I think he's uh, the only person other than me, I guess, who's already, who's using, actively using like touch modifiers and, and uh, all these crazy parts. So I don't nice. think we could find anyone better to do, do the documentation things there. It's really cool. Oh, well, that's interesting. I, I figured everybody else was playing with those things as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. So, uh... Sindre, could you talk about the server-side example you just uh, published uh, a few days ago yeah, or I, a week or something? Let's see. I could talk about it. I'm not sure how much there is to say. It's like just a really plain example of... Uh, yeah, no, I can talk about it. It is some interesting stuff. Uh, I've actually... One addition I, I made to, to Imba since the last meetup... Um, that was part of like making sure server-side rendering works well is that I, uh, um, I'm utilizing async hooks, which is a, an internal, like an API. Um, it's not internal, it's public, but an API in Node that allows you to essentially create a kind of hook into every asynchronous callback and after every promise is resolved to um, be able to how should I explain it? Like essentially add global variables or global state that follows the execution context uh, of a, uh, like follows each execution context. So if you're in, in Express or in, in a server, then if you just use this, uh, create an, an execution context, uh, create some variables connected to that, then everything that happens asynchronously for the rest of that, uh, that context will have access to those globals. So on the server side, that actually makes a ton of sense. If you, uh, let's say you think about, you have a thousand users who visit uh, a page and they have to render uh, their own versions of the page, but you also have to, you want to know about the URL of the request. You want to know the user who is logged in. You want to know like session information. Now that is actually, as I'm showing in those examples, you can actually, uh, uh, 
the the imba object the document object and the window object are even though they look like just global accesses in node they will be unique for every request like if you do something inside of an imba run block i'm not sure if the name if naming if uh, is perfect but then you will actually have these uh, things as as uh, unique for that request so that you could potentially like even you could even add event listeners to the document uh, and it it could if we just implemented chimps for that it could work uh, as if it was a as, as an isolated document just for that user, just for that request uh, rendering it, request. Is that session based? Is that with cookies, or how does that work? No, it's 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 using this uh, this uh, async cooks stuff from Node. So it's okay. just it is a way to to connect a, a certain state to execution contexts. So, so how it's implemented internally, I don't know. It's probably deep down into V8, but it is extremely useful. Like I haven't started using it uh, fully yet, but in all the SSR stuff we've done previously, we've hacked around it a lot by passing in the request to the HTML root and making sure that it's uh, passed into all the children. It's a lot of work and, and it's easy to... If, if you don't do it correctly, then it's easy to get so many bugs. Like we actually had one on Scribba earlier where, where uh, people would sometimes get served random pages. Like you went to a course and suddenly you were just seeing the front page of a random logged in user. <laughs> and that was because uh, there was a glitch we had in how the, uh, the URL and state of each request were handled. Like they... Uh, they accidentally okay. accessed the global. Yeah, it was <laughs> it wasn't pretty. But uh, hmm. so just the example I'm showing here is that we can even like make the the router work natively on the server just that it's the, as it does on the client, just by inside the handler that you can see in the on the screen from uh, Alexander, we can just set the actual document dot location to the URL of the request. And then the, the router don't even need to know about like, are we on the server? Are we on the client now? It just has to know, I have a document object and it has a location. And then it, it looks to that location to, to do its routing. That's just one of the many, many, yeah, cool things you can do with this. Cool. Well, I was going to ask Bohuslav if he has tried it out, but I don't see him in the, yeah. in the attendee list. I'll ask him on Discord. Has he yeah. has he mentioned it in Discord, or did you post I it on don't Discord? I think so. It's it's pretty soon. No, it's pretty recent. I posted a tiny bit about it, but maybe just in the pull request. I don't, I don't remember. I'm going to start use it on on Screenbar pretty soon. Uh, that so looks I'm cool. Not, yeah, and it's not kind of like, it's not kind of just just another possibly interesting experiment. It's the kind of thing that I, I know for a fact will be very useful. So I'm just looking forward to, to actually start using it and documenting it. Or not looking forward to that part, but yeah. <laughs> um, nice. Yeah. Good stuff. Definitely. So let's uh, go to the last topic. Uh, Frode, did you have any specific bits you wanted to cover around this or questions? Not really, but I'll, uh, so I mentioned it briefly and, and Sindhu mentioned it briefly, but our sort of um, for Scrimba as the company, we sort of have the launching of a version to beta at least before Christmas as a goal. And hopefully in the next couple of weeks, uh, do the majority of work. So like, we don't want to set an exact deadline, but uh, yeah, let's say before Christmas at least. Uh, we know that we need to update some of the documentation. We know that there needs to be a more landing page kind of intro guide thing that we discussed with Nathan. But uh, maybe just if if people have thoughts on what is needed, like uh, uh, examples of of implementations, like types of uh, types of apps, small small examples, these kind of things. Uh, basically anything that would be helpful for somebody coming to the site and, and, and seeing it, um, as well as maybe like what, if people have thoughts on the, what articles or should it be a video, should it be articles, these kind of things uh, that, that we will prepare, but um, feedback on it and thoughts on it would be helpful. Like, what, is there places we should post about uh, B2 uh, beta launch? 
Well, the scrims, yeah. the, the idea to to do a couple of examples, Imba examples uh, as scrims, uh, would be excellent because you're selling both the Imba as a language, but yeah. also a feature of Scrimba. Yeah. Indeed. Mm. Just just and, a quick another point here is that uh, we, we haven't mentioned it on the agenda here, but uh, uh, Andreas, like you, Loris, and me talked briefly today. We were going to talk for a long time, but I... I I had to attend to other things. Um, we are going to continue talking this week and, and uh, really clean up some parts of the compiler as well, uh, trying to to uh, formalize the options and just make a few things clearer there and also make uh, look at what we can do with ESIMBA, like how we can integrate it as tightly as possible because it's really cool, uh, cool thing. So. There is quite a lot of potential with the ESIMBA. It's based on ESBuild and that is really a magical tool and integrating that more, uh, compiling in by using that tool would be excellent. At least the bundling part is very, very speedy. Yeah. Just like I'm not that familiar with ES build, but what is sort of the, the, the drawbacks? What is uh, left out from ES build versus a webpack, for example, which I guess is a lot more complex and has a lot more features, but. Uh... It's well, it's exactly that complexity of a webpack that in the end was the biggest obstacle for webpack. So it has quite a lot of legacy code. Uh, many things cannot be modernized uh, for compatibility reasons. So ESBuild has started from scratch. It only supports uh, ECMAScript, latest versions of JavaScript as entry. It can produce whatever you ask it for. It is uh, written in Go, it parallelizes everything. So it is very, very speedy and it has full test coverage and every single bug that they discover, he immediately writes a test case for it as well. So it's really perfect coding. Uh, whatever I saw from ESBuild, I really was impressed with it. And so, so it the limitation, it, main limitation is it's only modern or like ES. Uh, and things like this, not really any like uh, compatibility otherwise, or uh, I guess lack of plugins and things you can say, but. Uh... A limitation limitation uh, actually is, is only on the, on the interfacing side. So that tool is uh, written in Go. So you get an executable and you have to integrate the executable in the node environment where everything is JavaScript. So mm. there's a smart solution for that, but yeah, bridging is, uh, relatively speaking, not that speedy, but yeah. they they have now officialized the plugin structure, so we are now able to write whatever plugin we might require. In the case of Imba, it is done already. It's pretty succinct. It's working. Uh, ES Build by itself has already support for many other um, file formats, be it JSON, be it CSS, be it uh, TypeScript. Uh, direct files or even base 64 encoded files, all of that is natively supported already by ESBuild. So it's it's really a good platform to start studying and to look into. Alexander, could you uh, could you press the link? Like this is the new documentation site for ESBuild. Yeah, sure. No, I, I really it. like the the front page. Like it's so powerful. The the animation there. It's just so <laughs> subtle, but it just keeps on going while you're at the site. <laughs> and it's actually like, it really shows how it's, it's, it's kind of like Imba in that way. It's, it yeah, seems yeah. impossible to be that much faster than all the others that I've, people have spent so much time building, but uh, yeah. So let's watch that animation for... <laughs> <laughs> for 120 seconds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, no, yeah. really, so, uh, this, is, this is a nice tool. So if we if we can integrate that, if we can use that as a as a back end uh, tool for the Imba compiler, that would really be great. It was uh, really cool. Uh, Alexander, no, um, Andreas showed me more about ESBuild and and uh, and posted some links about it. And I didn't know this, but the creator of ESBuild is actually the creator of Figma. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. I actually met that guy a couple times. Very smart. Oh, cool. Yeah, <laughs> I'd imagine. Has anyone given any thought? Has anyone given any thought to hygienic macros? Uh, no. Not uh, not yet. Uh, no. <laughs> okay, that'd be a nice to have down the road. 
Yeah. Did you pull send me some email about it for a long time ago? I might have way way back. Yeah, yeah. Um, Maybe uh, I'm not totally like what uh, what would be examples of that? Being able to create macros to extend the syntax of Imba. So you could do it without monkey down in the low level internals of the compiler. Yeah. But it's, I think it's probably kind of tricky. Uh, it's more, isn't it more like list stuff you do in Lisp and, or Lisp is a whole, Lisp is yeah, only Lisp one big hygienic guy. macro, I guess. I'm a Lispy kind of guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so this stuff is really fast, and uh, I'm happy we're not using Parcel. <laughs> Look at this. I wow. thought Parcel was really good at some point. If you have a simple site, it does work. Yeah, but I actually, I, I do think so. Even so, so uh, ES build Imba will be the 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 slow part of uh, of the build process. So Andreas, I and I talked about it. We will need some smart caching on the Imba side. But even like starting the Squimba server now takes four or five seconds. And I, I think that a lot of that time is actually that we do compile the Imba files directly, like when we run them. So if we can manage to make ES build and ES Imba a really like integrated nice tool, it might make sense for server stuff like that even to, to essentially bundle it through ES build before running it in Node, like well, making uh, that the default. Right now, yes, yes, Imba has already some some caching. Uh, yeah. The the idea, well, at least ES build supports uh, loading all the files from memory, so there would uh, you reduce the delays associated with accessing files from disk. So yeah. that's also another advantage. So it's I have quite some nice features in mind for ES Imba. And that's yep. the reason why I'm also discussing with Sindre. I would like to understand a little bit what is the expected architecture. I mean, the tooling architecture for Imba yep. and see uh, up to which level ES Imba would be able to support that. So it's not just client side code, but eventually also compiling server side code or even integrating it directly when you try to launch an Imba script from the command line. Yeah. Cool. Sounds very good. Uh, do you think this is something that like the, is this something that should be part of the V2 release? Yes, by all means. Yeah, it looks like it should. Yep. At I least think, think so. we, we, we uh, can I, get I, that, yeah. The, I also need some feedback. I mean, the tool has not yet been officially introduced. Uh, I have to rebase it also using Imba on GitHub. Uh, once we do, yes, we need feedback. So the more people use the tool, the easier it is to get feedback and start curing out all those childhood related sicknesses. Yeah, that it will obviously it, have. It definitely makes sense to to uh, to try to get that to a, ES Imba to a point where where that is the recommended way to like drop Imba roll up and also like the usual the usual webpack stuff. It makes more sense to use ES Imba, I think if we can get it to a point where i'm quite convinced myself as well yeah yeah it, it, it looks it looks good sounds good i haven't gotten around to trying it out but i'm gonna definitely play around with uh, it's is it on your uh, user uh, on github eloris i will start working on it this week again i mean uh, last time i worked on it was three weeks ago or, or even longer and uh, one month and a half ago now again i have a little bit of time so uh, yeah i will just polish a little bit the rough edges and i will i will let you know on discord yeah, what please, is ready please. for prime time yeah please do that uh, and i'm just gonna wait uh, instead of trying it now okay cool so um is there any other topics? Yeah, let me check the chat. Let's see. Yes, indeed. That is the URL. Thanks, Nathan. Let's add the link. Uh, let's just add it here. Oh, it goes to the next Thanks. page. Can I? 
it's, still it's good. probably so, not it's probably not in a running state right now because <laughs> the plugin was published just 10 days ago and they changed the syntax slightly so i'm not sure that is already integrated in eZimba. so it's quite dangerous to publish the link but go ahead <laughs> yeah yeah why not yeah it's okay be, but i do I, I do expect feedback eh? and <laughs> Should we start using Notion or something for the meeting notes instead of, like I know that uh, Google Docs is a, is a sticky, sticky product, but it's so just so the formatting and, and paging and everything is so weird. We we can use anything. Uh, it doesn't really matter. We could even just use Markdown files on GitHub. Yeah. yeah if you want, uh, sure, we can do that. So uh, if Notion works, that would be amazing. I use Notion every day. It works yeah. uh, really well. Yeah. So. I can create the Imba workspace and uh, yeah. invite you. And then yeah, maybe we should just we can... move over. Yeah, you can create a workspace too. It's good as well when, like, uh, you, Lores, and I talk about uh, the compiler options. Yeah. It's always nice to have a good place to, yeah. Do you, is, is the free yeah. version of Notion good enough or you have to take an abonnement? Uh, I think maybe for a team we need to do. Uh, Oh, we can use there the free some... one. It's, we... It works well. Like uh, there are some, uh, I use the pro version, but we can go really far without any issues, I think. Yeah, yeah Alexander tell me, it, it, does it, it, does it have an API? No, Notion has no API. It. I think that's the big thing they're working on now, actually. So you can, uh, if we want to, I don't think, uh, I've uh, thought about, uh, should we maybe publish some of this stuff? You could export the markdown from the Notion. Yeah, and you space. can keep and you can choose to keep whole uh, hierarchies of notes public, like almost like a wiki. So I think yeah. it makes sense to to do some of the the yeah meeting note stuff there. Hmm. But yeah. So I, I'll I'll uh, do that uh, later and just move everything over. They have an import feature, so it's super easy to just import uh, all of the past. Uh, entries cool so is there anything else yeah maybe just yeah trying to gather more people for for these uh, meetup meetings uh, although newcomers yeah publicizing that a little bit more on on discord would be interesting to have some newcomers here that, that give their opinion yeah yeah that's a good idea I've tried to post the Twitter uh, on Twitter. We, we could, when we flip the page, we could flip the, the page, like the imba.io page over to the V2 page pretty soon. Like even if the documentation, as long as Nathan has removed the, the half completed words from the documentation, I think uh, we can start, uh, when that page is working, then we could start just posting it like a few places on Reddit and stuff, not to try to get on the front page of Hacker News, but just get it a little out there because it's not out there at all now. So yeah, just careful, careful, careful. I'm, I'm quite, I'm wondering, uh, we have to support the beginners as well. I mean, there will be a lot of, of questions being asked uh, which just yeah. take time to to reply. It, it, we need more critical mass. I mean, more people who would be able to answer all those questions also on on Discord. Yeah, because otherwise it, it will just drag uh, people like Cinder down, <laughs> whose time would be better spent in and yeah, improving the the the, the actual Imba. Yeah. I guess Nathan is already on that. Like, uh, <laughs> yeah, let's, let's make that a uh, like. Don't do it tomorrow, but let's make it a short-term goal that we'll we'll get yeah. to a point where we can do that, like within yeah. you know this month or something. Mm. Yeah, that's that's already the plan. So I would say let's stick to the beta launch, and, and then we can do some announcements. Yeah. And... yeah, great. Yeah, sure. Sounds good. So, Sindre, with regards to time. Like, yeah. is two weeks from now good for you, the 23rd November, this time? Yeah, as a, the next meeting? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Like, I'm moving and uh, all sorts of other things, but uh, hopefully it will not collide. Cool, mm -hmm. I'm just going to add the date here so we can see it uh, visually. And if I can, yeah, we'll move to Notion, but um, this is the date then. 
And yep. I'm going to try to remember it, you, Loris, with regards to the announcements. So Twitter, Discord, and uh, yeah, that's the two places. Do you think like yep. it would be too much to announce it? Like, let's say we announce it next week and then we announce it um, in the weekend. Would that be too much? Mm -hmm. Like two announcements for the same event? No. For Twitter, no. It's ephemeral. It disappears. People don't notice. Yeah, and also on the Discord to use at everyone. <laughs> it, 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 well, it, it's not so much the announcing. It is more the message. The, the message should really say uh, even beginners are more than welcome to participate. Something uh, along those lines. Mm -hmm. Because, yeah, even today we, we have I posted a link on Discord in the documentation and the events or something like that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, people see it and they probably believe that they're not invited. Mm -hmm. So, okay. So you, you mean like we should try to write a message mm -hmm. that is inclusive and tries to encourage new people, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's, that's my gut feeling. I, I don't know what you guys think about it. I agree. I think just the fact that a few, like the, now the, all of you are kind of regulars, but at some point you chose to, to, to join the, the first meeting and with different wording, there might be a lot more people who choose to join that first meeting. And then we just get a, yeah, I, I think like, I think this message here is good. Like, yes. I think this, yes. we don't need to yeah. use this exact thing, but the spirit yeah. is the yeah. same as you're talking about you, Loris. I just have yeah. to make sure when I'm announcing it, it's not a dry message. Because it does yeah. tend, when I look back at the messages from my memory, yeah. they're uh, very, yeah. They should have more energy. I guess. Yeah, it. it could even be, you could even add, like, are you just interested in hearing about Imba? Or are you just. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. That Learn sounds good. Talk, we're going to try, we're going to try a few more experiments. Cool. Yeah, so, uh, let's wrap yeah. it up then. I just have one, one additional point. It's, it's just two minutes. Um, sure. I remember on Discord, some people, they were wondering and they were asking how easy or how complex is it to integrate Imba with normal JavaScript? So can you just import things? Can you just export things? Um, maybe it would be worthwhile to, as part of the introduction notes for the documentation, to state that Imba is two things. On one hand, it's just another dialect of JavaScript. I mean, like CoffeeScript or whatever. And then the second thing, it's the magical thing. It's uh, uh, it's this 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 React on st steroids, basically. Yeah, I think actually Nathan uh, rephrased some. It wasn't in the in the intro, but somewhere, I think he rephrased something to that. To that end, didn't you? So, so that people don't uh, shouldn't be afraid of of yeah just taking piecewise imba and mixing it with normal javascript that should just be working in most of yeah. the cases yeah and i think even if for me especially since i i created it I, I know it a lot but just being used to seeing the compiled output of imba makes you a lot more confident in it because you actually you do understand like it it is besides some of the the more advanced tag stuff it is just compiling to to JavaScript pretty one to one essentially. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I, I, I do that and, and I really love it, but I don't see an easy visual way of of yeah of making that available to everybody unless you go to. No, a but if you, if you look you... at the coffee script, if you look at the coffee script documentation, I think that's I'm not coffee script isn't like a big thing anymore, even though it's I think in my opinion it's part of the whole new era of JavaScript, obviously. Uh, but in CoffeeScript, it's actually front and center. They always show the compiled JavaScript version of the same CoffeeScript. And I'm not saying we should do that in Imba, but it gives you confidence in the fact that it isn't like a weird, magical... Like, if you didn't see that, you could think that it has a crazy runtime. And, yes, and, uh, yes, 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 correct. Yes. Yeah. In, in, indeed. Uh, yeah. I, I, I like that idea, yes. Yeah. But I've seen it. Uh, I've seen it in the, like uh, looking back. Sometimes people ask, "How do I include uh, NPM module or something like yeah. that?" And it's it seems like it's not obvious for some beginners that you can't just straight away use regular JavaScript. You can take almost yeah. any package from uh, NPM and start using it. Yeah, it's not. You can take. I don't any think package. it's obvious. There's no like. There's no. It's not obvious, but it's yeah. yeah. Boslav joined. 
Oh. Great. Bohuslav, uh, there is a server-side uh, example for you now. Hopefully you have tried it out and you can tell us what you think. Uh, I didn't try it, but thanks that you did it. I will take a look at that. Yeah, Sindre did it. He, he published it, uh, looks like 11 days ago. I also need to take a look at it deeper or actually use it. Looks fun, right? Mm, right. Yeah, but oh. it, it, doesn't, it doesn't show uh, show how you also awake and things on the client it only shows the plain server side stuff but i can add like the awakening as well later so but, Boo, uh, Slav, if something is missing there just create a new issue here just smash the issue button okay new issue and then uh, i'm sure sindre will uh, take a look or if he doesn't then we'll just talk about it in two weeks <laughs> yeah cool so let's let's wrap it up thanks uh, <laughs> thanks for thanks. coming Boo, Slav. <laughs> <laughs> please I'm sorry for uh, for wrapping things up just as you arrive. Um, yeah, sorry, Bohuslav. Next time, come is, earlier, yeah, please. I was late. <laughs> no, 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 problem, no problem. Yeah, you can watch the recording. I promise to get it out uh, really fast this time. I'll I'll just go dr take a shower and then I'll get it out to tonight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. Okay, I will watch the video. Yeah. Thanks for taking the time and yeah. uh, see you in two weeks. Yeah. Great. Thanks, thanks for, a lot. Yeah. Then. Cheers, everyone. Bye.